Well, I should have gotten a lady mule. Will you get up? <laughs> How do you do, ma'am? Looks like you got some trouble. Give you a hand? Young man, if you can get this consarn male mule up on his four feet, I'll give you a dollar. Well, never mind that. Let's see what we can do. Just needed a little encouragement and understanding. Well, here you are, young man. Uh, I just got paid, ma'am. I said I'd pay you, now take it. All right. Say, maybe you could use a couple of matches, just in case. Aren't you a little afraid out here all by yourself? Of course not. Well, one lone woman. Young man, I can take care of myself as good as any man that ever lived. And besides, if I did get into any trouble, I know how to handle this. I believe you. Town council gonna do. Something's gotta be done and done fast. Now, now, we're working on it, Mr. Black. Joe, hear what she done to Pineville? My brother wrote to me. It was awful. Yes, I know it was, but the... <gasps> Hey, Vince. Oh, hi there, Mr. Mayor. You men look like you got trouble. Well, that we have. What's the matter? Did the Apaches break out of the reservation? Well, it's worse than that. A lot worse. What is it, then? A new kind of woman. You mean a woman's the cause of all these long faces? Well, it ain't funny. She just about wrecked Pineville. What kind of a woman is this? Well, she's, she's something called a, a suffragette. Back east, these women clubs are campaigning for the rights of females. They say not only should they have the right to vote, but they should have equal rights with men in the home. That's right. They're swarming all over the east like grasshoppers. My brother wrote to me from Pineville. He said what I'm just left there was headed this way. Well, what does she do? Confuse the women folk by filling them with fancy ideas. How does she do that? By lying to them, telling them they were just as good as men. And now they should have the votes. Now, can you imagine what would happen to this country if women could vote? Here, Vin, look at this poster. Ladies, are you your husband's mate or slave? <laughs> Hear the word of Susan B. Anthony, Emma Burt's speaker, town hall today. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here she comes. It's too late. See what I mean, Vince? <laughs> you can't tell me a little woman like that can cause much trouble. Now, look here. Maybe you could help us. All of us here are, are married men, but you're a bachelor. 
Now, you must be pretty smart with women who've stayed that way that long. I can't help it. She's not breaking any laws. What do you mean, you can't? I came here to get some rest, and that's what I'm gonna get. But, Vin... If you'll take my advice, you'll just leave her be. Unless she breaks the law, that is. talk mighty sweet talk. But as soon as we promise to love, honor, and obey them, well, they give their cattle more privileges than their women. Yeah. How many of you are killing yourself? How many of you lie awake half the night worrying while that man cavorts in the saloon, gorging himself on strong drink? Ladies, we have suffered too long. But the day is at hand. Hey, I. You say there's nothing going on in there, then why don't you do it? Because you're the sheriff and it's your duty. That's right. You took an oath to defend us. Now live up to it, Dratton. United, we shall have the vote and equal rights and our freedom. Drop, what are you doing in here? Now, Amy, this here's official business. Official business? Ma'am, the town council just passed a new ordinance. Meetings of more than five ladies at a time is against the law. What? It's a law, Amy. They have no right to say Exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> you never saw so many wet hands. The way those women piled out of there. And you did it, son. Yes, sirree. You showed us how to get rid of that woman. I did. I did? Sure. You said leave her be unless she breaks the law. So we made a law and she broke it. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Get your clothes Come on, on, boy. Oh, wait a minute. Now, now look, stop I want to get some rest. We're going to give you the best kind of celebration kind of dinner a man ever had. Come on, Duchess. Come on, Duchess. Come on, Vin. Come on in, Vince. You make yourself comfortable, I'll tell her we're here. Thank you. Hello, Vin. Oh, hello, Mrs. Mercer. It's been a long time. That it has. Woman, where's our supper? Well, don't you recollect that I told you I was bringing Vin home? Yeah, I remember. I'm sorry for you, Vint. Sorry for him? Why? Because I ain't cooking your supper tonight. You ain't what? Cooking. Tonight or no time. Do you treat me better than you do that pesky dog? Uh, you see, Vince? You see what I told you about that woman? Miss Birch, if you please. If she hadn't come and opened my eyes, I'd have gone through life just being a slave. Well, we'll go someplace we're more welcome. Come on, Vince. Well, 
Woman, you're going to regret the day you ever heard of Emma Birch. Goodbye, Miss Mercer. Come on, Vint. And you stay out of here. And don't you expect me to do one blessed thing for you until you're ready to give me the respect I deserve. You hear, Henry Peabody? Yes, I hear. Just you wait. We'll show that woman up. You leave her be if you know what's good for you. Now get! But who needs food, eh? <laughs> Why, Mr. Mayor, it's sure an unexpected pleasure to see you. Oh, sure is. Little Peabody, where have you been keeping yourself? <laughs> well, Annie, you know What's I the matter? Don't you like me anymore? Sure he does, more than ever. Don't you, Peabody? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> who needs wives? Have another drink, boys. I'm certainly glad you boys have come back to where you're appreciated. Mr. Bonner, I will get Lucy for you. Ladies, I want a word with you. Who is it? It's me, Vince. Vince Mercer. Oh, no. The door's open. Come in. What do you want? Vince, you gotta let me stay with you. Why? She put me out. Who put you out? Martha, what do you think? When I got home from the fat dog, she said my place was out in the barn with the other animals. Now I ask you. Well, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even breathe on her. Hope you don't mind my sharing a room with you. I certainly do mind. Just because you men can't handle one little woman, I'm thinking of joining a cattle drive just to get some rest. Now, you go downstairs and get yourself a room of your own. Well, I can't. Ain't a single room left in the whole town. You mean she told all the wives to? Yeah. And they did? <laughs> <laughs> you said she wasn't dangerous. <laughs> the next morning, I decided to take a look around the town. You know, there wasn't hardly a man to be seen anywhere. Vint! Hello, Henry. Say, where are all the men? Well, where do you think? Doing chores. Doing what? Yeah. The fool females said they wouldn't lift a hand until we gave them their equal rights. <laughs> well, we'll show them, by golly. There's nothing to do in a few simple chores. The girls from the fat dog asked me to come to you. What about? About this equal rights business and Miss Birch. Well, she wants us to join up with the ladies of the town, even go out to their headquarters. Well, uh, when Miss Birch talks about equal rights, 
I don't think she means just the married women. Why don't a couple of you girls go out and see if she means it? I guess we could. Thanks, Mr. Bonner. Now, just what is it you want me to do? Oh, now, Vin, it ain't like we were asking you to do anything illegal. All we want you to do is to go out there and ask her how much she'll take to leave town. You mean offer her a bribe. Well, what's wrong with that? Yeah, the boys are losing money by having to stay home and do the women's chores, aren't you, boys? That's yeah, right. That's right. So it'll be cheaper to pay her off. Well, I don't think it'll do any good, but I'll try. <sighs> Mr. Bonner, let's hear it. Well, Miss Birch. Well, sit down, young man. Well. What do those men think they have to offer? <laughs> well, Miss Birch, this is not my idea. But they want to know how much you'd take to leave town. Mr. Bonner, the last time I was made that offer, the man left town. Oh. It was my second husband. Surprised to learn I've been married, Mr. Bonner? Yes, ma'am, a little. Seeing as how you feel about men. I don't feel any way about you men. What I'm against is the way you treat us women. We're not lackeys. We want respect. No. You've got to no, start treating Ms. us Ms. as... Miss Birch, Miss Birch, don't go on at me. I'm neutral. How can you be neutral? You're a man, aren't you? Oh, yes, ma'am, but, uh, you see, I've never been married. You a coward? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, Emma, but we're ready to start. I'll be right there, Martha. Mr. Bonner... Mr. Bonner, you tell those old fools that I'm not dealing with any bachelor. If they want to hear my terms, I'll see them at the meeting hall tomorrow noon. Yes, ma'am. Well, of all the low-down nerve... Well, if she thinks we're going to show up at that town hall, she's almighty mistaken. Did you say what would happen if we didn't show up? Well, she did say that if you didn't, why, uh, it would be another week before she'd think of making a deal. What? That's what she said. Well, it's, it's against nature, that's what it is. It's against nature, isn't it? Right. thinking of making peace with your woman. Well, you just better listen. Mr. Bonner, since you are neutral, would you mind officiating? No, ma'am. This is a proposition set forth by these ladies here. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. <laughs> and that men and women are endowed with certain inalienable rights. And those grievances set forth by the women of Roan Horse shall be recognized and each husband shall sign a pledge swearing to correct his faults. Pledges? Faults? What faults we got? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bonner. Yeah. Bonner's a traitor. Worse than that, he's a bachelor. Hey, I thought you were on our side. What's the matter with you? Ladies, would each of you state the grievance you have against your man? Mrs. Peabody. 
spitting on the floor. Always missing the cuspidor. <laughs> oh, I, I hit it half the time. <laughs> Belching at the supper table. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want him to stop kissing the dog and start kissing me. <laughs> <laughs> These are the pledges. If you men accept these conditions, you'll sign. Never! We ain't signing nothing. That's right. What do you think we are, sheep? I'm getting out of here. Come on, boys. Why you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, you're, uh, I thought you're on our side. You're not gonna sign, huh, boys? Of course not. Are we? Certainly no. No. No, indeed. Well, you're the mayor, Pete. We'll do as you say. What do you mean you'll do as I say? Ain't you got gumption enough to walk out of here alone? Oh, Henry, can I talk to you for a minute alone? Excuse me. Why, you lily livered? John. Ralphie. Looks like it's going to be a long, cold winter for us. Not for them, huh? <laughs> Let's have some dinner. Uh, just a minute, Vint. Uh, <clears throat> you got a pencil? Just happen to have one here. Miss Birch. Well, I guess you did what you came here to do. Of course, I can't rightly say I think the men are going to get used to the new order very quickly. There's nothing like a marriage that's based on an equal partnership. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Tell me something, Mr. Bonner. Yes, ma'am. Why are you still a bachelor? Well, Miss Birch, I just... Uh, oh, I come on thought. now. You well, ought to Ms. settle Birch, down. I've fine. got the loveliest daughter back you east. Have. Just well, 22. Birch, I'm, look, oh, she's a fine girl. A horse. The fine girl. Fine character. She yeah. takes after me, Mr. Bonner. I raised her myself. You can see, though, Mr. Bonner. She's a lovely girl. Mr. Bonner, where are you going? Mr. Bonner, come back here. Come back. Don't be a coward. It's the only name. 